So good morning, everybody. Welcome to St Mary's. And uh, the seasons change. We are now um, moving into a very different time in our church calendar, and you can tell as I'm in white. And uh, also today we're experimenting for Remembrance Sunday. Anthony's gone to the back, and I think the relief must be for those at home. Not only can they fast forward through my sermon, but now they have to struggle to see my face. So there's there's huge advantage in that. So hopefully everybody at home, welcome to our service this morning. We're here celebrating All Saints. And I'll come back to that a little later, but it's a really important Sunday and the beginning to a change in our seasons. <clears throat> so on our, in, or in our service book on page one, And as we worship this morning to recognise the generation of saints before us who have not only served God in this church, but all those for the last 2,000 years who have lived out that faith, that hope and that love that has established God's church. So grace, mercy and peace <clears throat> from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So these words are familiar but powerful words. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Just a moment of silence to gather ourselves into God's holy presence. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So that forgiveness gives us the courage and the hope to stand and say the words of the Gloria together. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's remain standing and bow our heads for the collect for all saints. Almighty God. You have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated as Jan brings us our reading this morning. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Consider how great is the love which the Father has bestowed on us in calling us his children, for that is what we are. The reason why, why the world does not recognise us is that it has not known him. Dear friends, we are now God's children. What we shall be has not yet been disclosed, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. As he is pure, everyone who has grasped this hope makes himself pure. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Taken from the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Brother Christ. Would you please be seated? So, all saints, it's a gateway into a whole new period in our church calendar. 
We move into a time of remembering, which all saints is part of, the saints who have inspired our faith through the generations. Next Monday night, all souls remembering those whom we have loved and are no longer with us. Into Remembrance Sunday, when as a nation we stop and we remember the sacrifices made by so many for the freedom of our lives. And then through to Advent and through to Christmas. This is a doorway into a whole new period in our year. And obviously a new church year begins with Advent Sunday. Now this year, it's going to be different. And we know that because of Covid. So the responsibility of us as saints in this place becomes even more important because those who would normally gather with us can't. So our prayers, our witness, our light is for all those who would normally be with us at this time. We have a, a responsibility, even more so than normal as God's people in this place, across our three churches, to bear witness by our actions. But a good place to start this morning as we enter into this new phase of our church year is with Matthew's Gospel, with the Beatitudes. Slightly different to Luke's version, and we find the differences between the two Gospels laid bare in, um, in Matthew, which is much more Jewish in its context. Jesus goes up a mountain like Moses and, and speaks God's word. In Luke, which is much more in a sense, centered around a kind of Gentile teaching, Jesus comes down from the mountain and talks to the people. Subtle differences and also subtle differences in the words of the Beatitude. But it's, a, it's an amazing place to start. It's a, a powerful foundation. And if we want to reflect on what sainthood looks like, then these words from Jesus are to us this morning words of immense encouragement. Blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit means those who know that they need God in their lives. So if you know that you need God in your life, then you are blessed. And that's an important thing. In, in Luke it says, blessed are the poor, but here it says, no, blessed are those who recognise that without God in their lives, there's something important missing, really fundamental to our faith. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now this is slightly important distinction to make. This doesn't just mean those who've lost. It's actually about suffering, those who suffer. Obviously mourning is one of the most powerful ways in which we suffer. But this is a gathering together of all those who suffer in our world. Blessed are those who mourn and suffer because through God's love they will find comfort. And that's the role and the work of the church. Blessed are the meek. Now this goes deep back into the psalm, Psalm 37. We find a very similar term. Deep into Israel's history, the idea that the meek will be blessed is a powerful one. And what we mean by meekness is humility. Blessed are those who in their lives take on the challenge of what it really means to be humble. Remember what Micah says, to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. If you can take on the challenge of humility in your life, then you will be blessed. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Do you desire to do the right thing? Is that at the foundation of who you are? Do you want to live doing the right thing? Then you will be blessed. That will be important in your story. And blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Reaching out to those in need. Behind the high altar there's a big pile of food right, and gathered from the school for Stone Pillar. We've already taken loads down. Can we be merciful to those who need mercy? And we're teaching it to the children in the school. Simple acts of love.
to those who have need means that we are blessed by God. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The heart is the centre of our very being. And there needs to be a purity of our heart. A purity of, in a sense, um, all that comes from the heart. Our, our loving, our imagining, all that sort of energy of our emotions and our feelings. That heart for God needs to be a pure heart. And that's why we come to confession so many times. And then with the importance of Remembrance Sunday, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. God's desire is that this world would be a place of peace for all, that no one will, no one will suffer. And we saw again yesterday in this awful story from France where people fleeing difficult places in our world have lost their lives in that journey that they make. Well, if there was peace in our world, people wouldn't need to make those awful journeys. So God wants to bless those who fight for peace in our world. And that becomes important as we gather on Remembrance Sunday. And blessed are those who are persecuted for what is right, for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that has been the story of so many saints through the generations who've been persecuted because of what they believe. Your faith is an easy faith. You're not necessarily ridiculed for what you believe. You don't have to hide your Bible or you don't have to hide away what you feel. In fact, your biggest problem is people are indifferent to you. That's where we are in our society now. People aren't necessarily um, going to persecute you. They're going to, they're going to be indifferent to you, have no interest in what you do at all. It's difficult for those who are persecuted. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So whatever the journey is, whatever you find on that journey, as long as you are centred in Christ, then you are blessed. And Jesus says at the end of it, rejoice and be glad. Now these foundations and if we reflect on them and actually you know it is a, a very interesting list it is the very foundation of our church and our faith spoken by Jesus to the crowd and these have been the marks of the saints through the generation and it gets to that point where and we have it in the letter that Jan read to us from 1 John that beautiful passage this morning John, an apostle, son of Zebedee, author of the Gospel of John around the AD 90, and also wrote these letters which very much mirror that Gospel. It was a general letter he wrote, probably from his base in Ephesus, which is modern-day Turkey, and he was writing against false teaching that was bubbling up very quickly in the early church. And I want you just to listen to these words that he writes at the start of his letter in chapter 1. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is, and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. A wonderful theme of life that we get in John's Gospel becomes a theme of his letters. And it's a test of our, our lives in God. If we are light into the world in which we live, by our very actions do we shine as light. And John encourages us in um, what Jan read this morning, and we will be like him when he is manifested. And that should be our great hope, to be like him, to be that humble, to be that gentle, to have that level of compassion in our lives. So you can't ask your career advisor at school to be a saint. 
Derek, what would you like to be when you grow up? I want to be a saint. Can you imagine that conversation? Because it's not something that you can go and apply for. It's about taking on the responsibility of being God's people through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, through the shedding of his blood and through the resurrection. Those are the things, that's the, the qualification for us to be saints, is to say that those things are important to us and we will live out those things expressed through these Beatitudes this morning in our life. That's how people will know that we are God's people. That's how people will encounter God through the things that we say and the things that we do. And it's really important at All Saints to remember the people who've spoken to you. You are here because people spoke to you. Or people lived out their lives in a way that inspired or encouraged you. Maybe it was grandparents, maybe it was your parents who took you to church as a child. Maybe it was the vicar at the time, maybe it was a Sunday school teacher, maybe it was a class teacher. Someone along the line will have encouraged you for you to be here this morning, to see, to be in this place. And that challenge of speaking of faith is ours as well. What a privilege it would be to know that someone not that it's ever happened for me, but can you imagine that someone had been touched by something you had said, something you had done, some expression of faith that you had um, displayed, some form of light that had encouraged someone to come and find God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, someone recognising their need for God. So we journey into this coming season with all these things foremost in our minds. So on all souls, as we gather the names of all those who have died, the church's great message of hope and resurrection. As we gather on Remembrance Sunday with the nation and the world, the church's great message of peace, God's desire for peace. And then through to Advent, the great season of moving from darkness to light. When we come to Christmas, the great hope of the Incarnation, that life that has shaped the Church for generations. So All Saints Sunday is such an important Sunday to give thanks for the Saints, to remember our role and responsibility as God's people now, and to commit ourselves afresh to God as God's people to the world in which we live. Amen. And so let us stand as God's people and declare our faith together in the words of the Creed on page 5. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sit or kneel to pray. And to the bidding, Father, by your Spirit, would you respond, bring in your kingdom. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. And so we pray for the coming of God's kingdom here on earth. You sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your Spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. 
So send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. And send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, Bring in your kingdom. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in mind and heart to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of love. With this bread that we bring, with this wine that we bring, bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. And with the generations of those who have gathered around the Lord's table, we use Eucharistic prayer E to join our prayers with their prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day, when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary, Peter, James and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord.
So let's bow our heads in prayer. God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast and the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, um, I hope it's worked for everybody at home. That's the main thing, isn't it? And um, actually, someone said to me the other day, 
that they'd like to see in the backs of your heads just to feel that they were part of. So hopefully, uh, for those who like seeing the backs of your heads, and I think the front of your heads are not bad as well, but the backs of your heads must be a real joy for everyone sat at home uh, celebrating this Sunday with us. Uh, a couple of things. Um, I think we need to be mindful um, as church communities that COVID is getting closer. Now, I had one of the tests the other day just as part of a survey, and I'm clear, so all around my house for a hug thing. <laughs> Not. Um, I think cases are rising in places like Portsmouth, and I suspect. So if something happens, we've got to be prepared that the church, so if someone has a COVID outbreak, if we have someone here, then the likelihood is that over a very short period of time, we might have to have one Sunday or one Wednesday when we don't meet. And I think we need to all be mindful of that. That's why the, the train of emails and use of Facebook and everything is so important because it allows us to get that information out really quickly. So if you're not yet receiving the bulletin sheet, Liz has done an amazing job in trying to get all your emails on. If you're not receiving the bulletin sheet, it's also important to let the wardens know that you're not on email so that we can ring you if anything happens urgently. That's going to be important. If you're not watching Facebook, and I'll go home today and record my weekly vlog so you can watch that as well, um, or not accessing our website, those places will be where that information will come out. Really important. I'm nervous that something's suddenly going to happen um, and we're going to need to respond quite quickly. I think now the next important um, event, next Monday evening, 7 o'clock, if you want to come and light candles in remembrance of people that were close to you and are no longer, it's 7 o'clock, uh, a gentle service with prayers and lighting candles. But still, would you let the wardens know if you want to come? And then remembrance. Now, I feel fairly confident that you're going to come on the Wednesday if you are here now. And the Wednesday service on the 11th, in a way, is slightly more special because it's the actual day of armistice. So we will have a Holy Communion at 10 o'clock and then we will go down to the War Memorial for silence at 11 with children from Esborn Primary School. So, but you still need to let Alison and Roger know if you are going to be here. Because although the numbers for the Wednesday aren't big, it's not to say that they might that might not change. If you want to be here on Armistice Day, you need to let Alison or Roger know. The numbers for the Sunday, I think we're pretty much there now, really, aren't we? There's not much, well, maybe one or two places left, which is really good. So we're going to get about 70 in on the Sunday, and then if people can't make that, then the Wednesday is still free. But you will need to let us know that you are coming. Because if you turn up and you haven't let us know, and there's been a sudden rush of people that did let us know, then you may not be able to come in to the building. So that's really important. And then as we move forward into Christmas, the same sort of things are going to happen. <laughs> as you can imagine, it's really difficult. And we must thank Roger and Alison once again for their hard work in keeping us all safe. So keep an eye on the... On the uh, the, the bulletin sheet that's coming out. If you're not getting it, let us know because we'll add you to the list. Keep watching on uh, Facebook or on our website and the service that Anthony is recording this morning will be put up for Sunday morning. Lots of ways of keeping in touch, but most of all, keep in touch with each other. Um, the winter is going to feel very long, particularly for people who live on their own. This is a time for us to really be saints and reach out in love to everybody. So let's stand for our final blessing. He says that and then he can't find the, the actual... It's a typical. So, Heavenly Father, on this Sunday, as we remember the many generations of saints who have inspired, who have encouraged us, may we too be saints to this generation. 
bringing hope and faith and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.